Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to use the formula that we derived in the last video which was a formula to finding the final velocities of two objects after an elastic collision. So we had a system like this with M1 and M2 traveling towards each other and like this. Their, fine, uh, their initial velocities were like this and at the end of the last video which i encourage you to watch if you didn't watch it yet at the end we saw that v prime which is the final velocity of the first block it is equal to 2 m2 v2 plus v1 and then we have m1 minus m2 divided by the sum of the masses and we had a similar formula for v2 prime. We just replaced the 2s with the 1s and with the 1s with 2s in this equation. But this one is enough for our case. So today we are going to consider the case where m1 is equal to m2. And maybe we call them a common mass m since they are the same. Now, what I want to... Find, try to find out is is there any simplifications if the masses are equal and i mean i expect that there would be some simplifications perhaps you do too so what do we get for v1 prime for v1 prime we will get 2 m v2 plus v1 divided by m minus m and again divided by m plus m so this is 2m and of course this one m minus m that is going to go to zero so at the end we have 2m v2 divided by 2m 2m's cancel and look at this we get v2 huh this is interesting isn't it this is telling us that in case of an elastic collision and where the masses of the objects are the same the final velocity of the first object is going to be equal to the initial velocity of the second object. Well, this is really interesting. And let's use some another equation that we derived in the last video. So I also showed that if we have an elastic collision, we also have this relation. That is, the sum of the velocities of one object is equal to the sum of the velocities of the other object. And here, if we substitute V2 for V1 prime, so if we name this V2, we see that these cancel and we get another interesting result that V2 prime is equal to V1. So, similarly, the final velocity of the second object is the initial velocity of the other object. If there is an elastic collision and if the masses are equal to one another. So to picture it, you simply need to understand that. And let me draw it on the new page. If we have two blocks M and M. And if they are traveling towards each other or away from each other with velocity v1 and v2 when they collide in an elastic collision so they collide maybe and this is the second picture now our first m will travel in this direction with v2 and the second m will travel with v1 so they will exchange their velocities well this is all cool but can we see an example to this and sure you can if you go check it out, Newton's Cradle, and I want to write it, Newton's Cradle. I guess you uh, came across to this, but perhaps didn't know its name. And if you search it on the internet, you're going to get a picture something like this. We have strings and balls are attached to it like this. Perhaps we consider the uh, case with two balls, and you can attach more to them. And if you release one of the balls from this height, maybe, it is going to come and collide to this one. And it is going to come to a stop. Why is that? Why does it come to a stop? And of course, the other one is going to move in this direction. Why is it the first block that we release will come to a stop after the collision? Because of what we proved today. The, the masses of the 
Both are equally, I mean, kind of equal. They are exact, not exactly the same, but they are approximately the same. And even though it isn't a perfectly, you know, a perfectly elastic collision, it is a collision that is close to an elastic collision. So they will exchange their velocities. The release block will stop because after the exchange of velocities, he's, it needs to stop because the initial velocity of the other ball was zero. And the other ball will acquire the velocity of the block that we released just before the collision. And it is going to oscillate. The whole system is going to oscillate back and forth. And it is going to really be a pleasure to watch them oscillate. Anyways, this is it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I want to consider the case where one of the masses is much greater than the other one. And so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.